it's like funny. it's like huh huh you want me to you want me to do something it's like yeah <laughs> hurry up the last episode of shogun was this past week last week right? yeah okay yeah the 23rd okay sorry i need to fix my chair a little bit Ugh, starting to feel too low to the ground that was weird Definitely. yeah dude yeah, it was last week. Okay, okay. Well, um, I'm ready to hear your take on the finale. Ooh, Zach's. I feel Ooh, like well, we- I feel like among your um your panel, it probably was pretty controversial. It would be my guess, at least as far as like there are probably people who appreciated it, and then people who were like, no, <laughs> that was not how they yeah. should have done it. Um, so that's what I was thinking. Yeah, uh, yeah. for his panel too. Um. And I won't. We, I'm we'll interested. Talk, speaking of which, yeah. I'm, I'm interested to hear their take on that finale too. So. Yeah, me too. I have to admit, I'm I'm torn a little, I guess. And I we don't have to talk about it quite yet, but like I'm just I'm kind of torn on it. Um, yeah, I, I am too. I think, but I, I think, think you're going to be shocked with, with <laughs> my answer. I I think I'm. Uh, you know, you say that every week, and then I'm like, no, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, I'll you're get like, you. I know you're. You're like, oh, I'm gonna shock you this week, and then I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, yeah, man. Uh, still overall happy with the show. Like, I can't. Yes. Um, but I have thoughts. It's a good show. It's yeah, a good yeah, yeah. show. I have thoughts. Like, it's it's consistent, and it's a show I would go back through and rewatch again. Yep. Probably one more time. Oh, probably uh, one you know, it, <laughs> yeah probably just one more time maybe a third time it's not like uh, it's a good show as far as mo- like compare comparing it to puss in boots the last wish it's that's because odd. of how it ended <laughs> i know it's a, it's a weird translation but you know how like i was so impressed with that movie right and that i could just go back and watch it and watch it and watch it and watch it again because it's so well done shogun's really really well done don't hear what i'm not saying but i think I think you'll just have to wait to find out. Okay. That's fine. That's totally fair. I think you have to wait to find out. Well, let's talk about episode nine, though. Yeah. Nine. Hang on. I got to make sure all my stuff is in order with that. Um, if I do... Oh, no. That's going to mess with it. Oh, no. I don't want to mess with her. Hang on a second. No problem. Ooh, yeah, sorry. If I Zach said that he's torn on it too, disappointed in the finale, but the rest of the series stands on its own. That I I I understand. I I definitely yep. understand. Um, I don't. Well, let's talk about episode nine first, because we, yeah. we're jumping way too far ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see here. I'll pop this up. All right, Joseph. Uh, to be honest, it's. It's. Been, I really probably should have rewatched this uh, ahead of time. It's okay. I can, um, I remember episode nine really well. I can surprisingly. I know that's surprising for everybody that I actually remember I, episode nine. I remember most of the major beats in it. Um, because they're headed to uh Osaka, right? Yes, that's the Crimson Sky episode. Yes, this is Crimson Sky. This is Miriko's episode through and through. I I don't think um there's you know. She is the main character of this episode. <laughs> yes, and I think I said when we were on Zach's streams, we didn't. We we when we were on his stream last, we mainly talked about episode eight, and towards the end, we kind of just gave uh, a little bit of thoughts regarding episode nine. And one of the thoughts I gave was, is Mariko uh, symbolically the Crimson Sky because she yep. typically wears a lot of white in every episode, and in this episode, she or in episode nine, she was wearing a lot of red um and so you know we kind of we got our answer in episode 10 that that was the case uh yes absolutely i mean like just straight up that was that was what it was um yep and we we found out like tornaga's plan uh was finally revealed um as he uh aimed to put shido in a no-win situation so that's kind of what his goal was with Mariko was that by sending her into the castle to rescue the hostages, Tornaga aimed to undermine Ishido's support. Uh, and then, you know, he 
wanted to put a shooter when this kind of um, put him in a hard place, like find himself into a dilemma. And he couldn't release Mariko without losing face, yet keeping her risk committing, risk her committing seppuko. Uh, I'm pro- am I pronouncing that right? Uh, I, yeah, I mean, basically, seppuku, I think is how I usually seppuku. say it, but I don't know if that's, okay. someone will be upset with the way that I said it too, so like, don't yeah. worry about it too much. Yeah. Um, All right, well, um, and if she committed seppuku, then that would disgrace him, and then the shinobi intervened, and though, um, during that intervention of them, it was obvious that that was going to backfire on him, um, and now his ability to secure the hostages is compromised, and... You know, he thinks it's a smart decision to do that by attempting to capture Mariko. Uh, But in the end, what ends up happening at the end, the episode nine, her dying, um, ended up being the worst possible outcome for him. Yeah, Uh, yeah. It's so it it was the worst of both worlds because the episode essentially is setting up like if anything happens to her, um, the uh, the uh, the show not the shogun excuse me like the samurai families like the you could call them royalty to some degree i think um i'm not exactly sure what the best term is but like they those families would have been upset had she done that and so her getting assassinated is probably worse and i don't know if episode 10 fully speaks to that i i honestly don't remember um but the idea being that uh if they hurt her there were going to be a lot of people that turned on them. Uh, and then yes. so, so, but I think it does happen anyway. And it, mostly what it is is, uh, and forgive me because I can't remember her name, but the, uh, the woman who, uh, she's the mother of the air. Uh, uh, o- Ochiba? I think Ochiba? that's right. O- um, Ochiba? She, she ends up, uh, she ends up turning anyway. And it has, it probably has everything to do with uh, Mariko and what, what she did uh in the end i, I kind of thought that what that make any sense though why for her, her to turn why? because like thinking about it from her position uh if toronaga becomes the emperor obviously his you know, or the shogun his direct threat is the heir am i thinking of this wrong uh i mean i don't i think at that point it didn't matter because it because of the the politics involved in that um her son basically just wouldn't become anything at that point or and and this again this is this is kind of outside of this is probably more of like a history thing with their culture um if he became shogun uh does he take you know the air under his wing and then like that that goes from there or is it one of those things that's like hey we'll just we're going to step back and allow you to rule because ultimately like he was changing the entire political structure and by taking over. Yeah. I guess we're getting an episode 10 with that, but I really, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it didn't it's make the right. most sense because it was like uh, Zach's uh, troll room. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I would imagine again, it's a different culture, but typically how these things go uh, historically is when someone comes to power like with Toronaga becoming the Shogun, you're going to eliminate that threat of the child. And so Ochiba, uh, I got to find her name real fast. <laughs> Where's that chick at? Because that's going to bother me. Oh, yeah. Ochiba. Okay, good. Ochiba. I was saying it right. Nice. Um, Ochiba no Kata. Uh, with her becoming, with her having to think about her son and his well-being, I would just imagine that she still would have thrown her support behind um, Ashido, but... What do I know? I'm not a, a historian of well, and Japanese his, culture the, the during thing, that time. The only reason that I could... Uh, the thing that comes to mind for me of why I would disagree with you is because his entire goal was it was clearly to become the shogunate, but to do it without sh- with shedding as little blood as possible. Yes. And so I think overall, even if that wasn't fully developed... I don't think that's the route that he would go because that's not what he wants. He basically, he, he, just, wanted, to, yeah, he but, wanted to prove that he was the smartest person in the room, you know? Yeah. And like he, he essentially took power by outsmarting everybody else because he understood, like he understood the way that culture worked and played everybody uh, in that way. And 
if she was going to change her support over, which would change a lot of other people's support, there was probably something in there that was like, you're not, you'll leave us alone. Like, we'll essentially bend the knee to you, and that'll be that. Yeah, I just don't know. <laughs> that's I fine, but know. I mean, like, that's that's the evidence in support of it. Like, it's why would why would why would he? I mean, like, he doesn't he doesn't need to. Yeah, but she point. doesn't. O- Ochiba doesn't have Ochiba doesn't have any reason to trust Toronaga. In fact, she has more reason to trust Ashido than she does Toronaga. I mean, he does because, she? like he because well, she she it's been established that she doesn't trust Toronaga that she believes. Toronaga was responsible for her father's murder and planned it out and that he's operating behind the scenes. He's doing things, you know, mani- manipulating what's going on. And so I don't know that jump from, Oh, Mariko died, which I understand to now I'm supporting Toronaga. I, well, maybe okay. maybe you're maybe right you're, that it just wasn't well developed enough. Well, here's the thing: is like you got to take into to consideration Mariko's role in all of that, and her loyalty to um, Tornaga and Ochibo seeing that, and then uh, the other guy whose name slipped in my mind. What was it? I just want to call him Ichiban, which is terrible. Oh, oh yeah, uh, uh, Ashido. <laughs> Ashido, who sent assassins after them. Who wouldn't allow anyone? He he basically uh, left the entire council uh, as hostages, and she was she's aware of all of that. And then um, there was that moment with her mother, who was yes. basically telling her like, "Hey, like you need to let these people go. This isn't right." So there are there are things that have been planted throughout the season that would make sense as to why and i'm sure there's more like if you like i'd have to go back and watch the entire thing again but i i guarantee there are like things throughout there that are showing sort of that progression away from like, well, she's changing her mind about everything well um, the heir's mother excuse me the uh emperor's wife the original wife um the taiko that died yeah uh she said to ochiba in an earlier episode Hey, you don't need to ally to yourself with the Shido. Essentially, it was he's an idiot. Don't ally yourself. Sure, with him. and and um, maybe ultimately and it, that it was just the best political move. Yeah, I just yeah, because you're stuck. You're stuck between these these two individuals, and you have to make the potential best decision not only for yourself but your son. Yeah, and uh, yeah. one road, and potentially siding with the Shido could lead to the death of your son, more so than not. That's true as if well. You, if you stand, if you tried to stand against that and then lose, like they, because I mean, they, you know, they, they did show at the, the beginning, like they're clearly not uh, afraid of uh, killing kids. No, they're not. You know what I mean? And so like there, you're right. There's definitely some back and forth there. Um, and I'll, I'll go back and maybe I'll go back and watch the whole thing pretty soon. And, and I'm wondering though, if there's a lot of headcanon that has to be used to bridge that. Versus what, you know, is actually no. I mean, like depicted. that's all. But I think you're right. All, Maybe that's all like, stuff that happens in there. I mean, like I, the the closest I would come to to head canon with that would be, uh, she, like making the right decision for her son because I don't know if the, it's ever outright said, but it that just that makes sense no matter what story you're telling from a mother's perspective, unless she just outright hates the kid, right. which she clearly doesn't. Yeah. Well, I did enjoy in episode nine that we finally got to see John uses uh utilize his pistols. <laughs> that was really nice. Yes. You know yeah, what I mean? I agree. Um I feel like we've gotten teased with that all a season. Right. <laughs> and then finally, you know, in the penultimate episode we get the the yeah. pistol action. Well they, they did a very like Game of Thrones thing with episode nine, which is that like, yeah, that's, that's the big action episode. Like there's there's some throughout the rest of the season, but that's the big, uh, the that has like the bigger I wouldn't say bigger set pieces. Like it's still rather contained, which I'm still in favor of. Like I'm kind of sick of spectacle being in everything. Um, right. I I think one of my favorite things about the show is how reserved it is. Um, well, which hey, is, just which get is also ready. yeah. What? Be- what are we just get ready because uh, the Rings of Power season two. 
is going to have apparently uh, two, like episodes two episodes of battles. Battle. Like, what are we going to talk about for a two episode battle? Like, I don't even know. Dude, hopefully, it's really good. I really do, but I highly doubt yeah. it. I mean, yeah, we already know. We've we seen, already know. We've seen the quote unquote battles in this show already. It's mm. and the and, and the news that has come out. Um, they uh, it's funny because now one of the directors of speaking of the rings of power you're gonna be surprised by this but one of the directors of Shogun is also a director of the rings of power oh it's yeah the, she she did like episode two of this right yeah she did which i think it was you know but directing and it's not the same thing tv and versus movie is not the same thing well not just that but you know, there are like Ryan Johnson wrote episodes of Breaking Bad, and everyone considers Breaking Bad one of the greatest shows of all time. You know what I mean? It was episode three she directed. It was three? Okay. Either yeah. way, like I okay. You know, it's like yeah. I'm sure there's you some never detail. Know. Yeah. Yeah. This has a higher has way higher caliber of acting, um, cinematography. Like it's not like you having your name as the director on there, like that means something. But there is so much work that goes into it behind the scenes, that like that clearly. And not only does it show that it's not just that person who's in kind of control of what's going on, um, it also shows that when you have everything together on every other end, even if like that's a uh, someone who's like maybe they're not the best director or whatever everyone else is kind of pulling that extra weight along with that, you know? Um, it's hard, because look at, dude, look at some someone, like, we talk about Zack Snyder a lot recently because of Rebel Moon. Uh, I mean, he's he's had better successes in his past than with Rebel Moon, and you get to see now, like, man, maybe he wasn't doing as much in the past as he is now, and he was better off when it was just like, oh, it's directed by Zack Snyder, but, like, he's not writing it, he's not the cinematographer. Not that a lot of his other stuff is very good, but there, there's Significantly definitely... better than... Yeah, Rebel oh, I mean, yeah, Maybe yeah, with yeah. the it... exception of Sucker Punch. No, I think Sucker Punch is probably still better. I mean, I would agree, but I think, I think there... Still somebody could better. probably make an argument that, it, you know... Yeah, maybe, but, like, that'd still probably be hard, because I feel like even that has... M- more going for like characters though i heard i think i was watching efap and someone in their comment section was like if you don't have any character development then you can't have any character assassination (laughs) i was like or oh he said if you don't have any characters then there's no character assassination (laughs) so i was like ah yeah that is clever um (laughs) zach's you can keep nerding out in the troll room dude it's cool Um, yeah zach's keep doing it um, so we're yes. reading it, even if we don't say anything, we're reading it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, Jenna had asked, uh, "Shogun is based on a re- on real events?" It, yes, and um, uh, a lot of the characters in the show are based on real people. The events that happen in the show are fictionalized in different ways um, for the sake of, yeah. you know, the entertainment of it. It uh, otherwise you're not getting like, y- you might not be getting an interesting story because like. In real life, sometimes people just die suddenly, and you know you can't get those dramatic moments that you're looking for. Um, well, I have a great idea, David, that I just uh-oh. thought of uh-oh. Um, for when we release uh, this review on YouTube and on the socials. Uh, we got to title it "What Hamas Supporters Think of Shogun," and then the next one can be "What Israeli Supporters <laughs> Think of Shogun." Uh, yeah, I mean, we, <laughs> so we can hit uh, the, the algorithm, bruh. Dude, because the only reason I mentioned that is I'm not going to call out who this YouTube content creator was. I do like them. I like their content. Um, but oh, so it's they, not Temple. Okay. No, no, no. It's not Temple. <laughs> um, but it was like... I'm not going to... I'm going to call out the... Uh, who was it? I, Just say it. It was in Demion, but he did this... Uh, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> yeah. I, I enjoy um, a lot of his content, but it was kind of funny because he titled one, his video today... Games Workshop rejects Warhammer 40k fans. Plus, Henry Cavill hobby goes full woke mind virus. I was like, oh, why would you put in? I mean, I know why he's putting Henry, Henry Cavill hobby goes full woke. But when you see it in your YouTube, uh, the the homepage, it just stops at plus Henry Cavill. Yeah, 
And it's like, I'm like, oh, there must be something like Henry Cavill in this. And then I open it. I'm like, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's all clickbait. And, you know, yeah. I, I just. Hey, teach their own. I'm not, you know. Yeah. I mean, I guess so. I just, I'm kind of over it to some degree. Yeah. Um, but it's a per, it's a personal thing. I mean, it, it definitely it doesn't mean. for me. We don't get, like, clicks as much. But then, like, if you're going to come in and, and we're just, like, talking about Shogun or whatever, you might, <laughs> you might be, you know, we're not screaming or. I mean, I, I try to think of like funny titles for what we're talking about you sure, know what sure. i mean um but the uh yeah i'm just i'm i don't know man i don't and we've talked about this it, in the past like i just don't have i don't feel like screaming about stuff or like yes you know what i mean i just don't have it in me yeah, it, yeah. well we know the one screamer on youtube that uh <laughs> i can't really watch that much just because i'm like it, it, it's more so like bro i just want to give you a lavender pill like let's calm you because <laughs> like it's not i don't have a problem with it but when it's every single video you're putting out and every single video is is to well, a heightened degree at least to me it's you like, know here's the here's the thing and I, i've noticed this around content creation is that unfortunately sometimes when you find your niche you kind of get pulled into that and you have to keep doing that Yep. Um, and it can it can cause um, problems down the line. You know. Uh, you remember? Okay, so you know what a good example of this is is Bert Kreischer. So, Bert, you know, was like a comedian, or is a comedian, and then uh, like when he was starting out, like he was doing okay, I guess, and then at some point he just decided during sets to start taking his shirt off, and for like. 10 years maybe longer than that uh, maybe up until recently I th you know he's moved more he's tried to move more into like movies and television which I don't know if it's been super successful for him or not but he I think he was on Rogan one time talking about how like I got stuck doing that like every show I had to take my shirt off oh yeah because people started to expect that that started to be essentially part of his persona as a comedian and so when you go into something like this and you know, maybe you do have an like a um, a video where, let's say, like you, Joseph, in one of our videos, just started like going crazy, you know, whatever, you know, saying all this stuff, and then like it was like the most successful video that we ever had, like the most successful live stream, like all of a sudden, like we're getting all of this uh, extra attention because of that. Well, mm -hmm. the pressure for you to continue to do that because, Rises. yeah, and so if that's what you're focused on, yep, uh, yeah, which most people are yep like let's be honest about it like people upset you know we do to some degree like i feel like we've taken a step back from it a little bit but like people look at the numbers all the time because especially when you get to a point where that becomes your livelihood and those numbers and and having to be able to push out videos and do all that stuff like that becomes what you need to do to survive like you're gonna you're gonna continue to do that if that's the thing that's getting eyeballs on your content one way or another like whether it's hate views or whether people like you, um, mm -hmm. you're going to do the stuff that that is working for you generally, um, and you'll you'll stick with that uh, until it stops working or you go crazy and quit, you know? Yeah. Um, and so it's like it's one of the things that, and we've talked about this before with like no agenda, but it's one of the things that I I also liked about their system is over time, like if if we are able to grow an audience and the value for value stuff takes off. Again, it's a, along with not having to sell people waffle irons, we also don't have to be, we don't have to move into some sort of like personality that we're not. Yes, we, we don't can have, just be ourselves. Yeah, exactly. We can have discussions. We can, you know, do the things that we want to do, and we don't have to try to um, be more than we're not. We don't have to, you know, lose our minds over all of these like algorithmic things or whatever. Because ultimately, like over time, you find your audience. Yep. Even if it's slow. And your audience finds you. Yeah. Now, um, and, go ahead. Again, I like Adamian's. Um, I like his content, and he's he's very rational in his videos, which is why I enjoy them. Because he's not like yelling or and he's just talking. Sure. Um, and so it's good. I just thought that was funny. I'm, is all. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, that's a bit. That's a bit clickbaity. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. one of those uh the oh, quartering very, yeah it was one of the quartering, quartering type of uh <laughs> yeah and it listen it works for the quarter yeah, i mean just, yeah, i yeah, get i get it do not get me wrong i completely understand why they're doing it i just it's kind of like eh. like i just i don't i don't get any joy out of that you know 
I don't go, oh I boy, I look, I get to make all these clickbaity thumbnails, titles. you know, and titles. Yeah, it just doesn't really work for me. Um, anyway, that was uh, a nice tangent, though. So I do, I do want to talk. Uh, I, I, th- I want to give episode nine just a little bit more time before we get into ten. Um, I, uh, I, I really the cinematography in it was in episode it's nine. Very good. I, I have to probably admit, the best of the entire season. I'm not a hundred percent sure if I like these fisheye lens lenses that they use. Now I don't know if this is the actual lens if they're doing something in post um, to like stretch this out the way that it is. Um, but I am not. I'm just not in love with some of these wide shots like I just had okay. up there. Um, it, I don't know. It, so, you know, I grew up skateboarding. That's kind of how I got into to video uh, in the first place. Uh, it was just one of those things that, like, my friends and I would go skate, and I'd, like, record stuff, and we would uh, cut up little videos and stuff. Um, and Fish Islands is, at that time, were, like, really popular. That's like what you used uh, for a lot of uh, like shooting a lot of stuff. Now this is a lot right. more subtle than a lot of the stuff from the '90s and 2000s, like early 2000s. Um, but it's still like I don't know. There's something about the way this looks that, and it's again, it's just some of these wide shots. Like it's not a lot of this other stuff. You can kind of see it actually, but it's not as bad. Um, but I, I'm just not I'm not huge on that as a like visual style. Um, yeah, I'd be curious to know what the like the reasoning behind it was, what they were thinking. Yeah, yeah what the um, I can see your point. There's been some yeah. shots in earlier episodes to where I was thinking I don't really know what they were going for with this and why they chose to shoot it this way. Um, but I but still I, sorry, go ahead. I liked that shot though personally. That one, I think, I think, oh. it's. I mean, I from there's a lot I like about it. I just don't. I don't really. I don't know. It doesn't do a whole lot for me. Cosmo Jarvis, acting wasn't good. Good. I don't know. I don't know why. I honestly don't really. I we didn't we didn't really get an opportunity that night to dig into that specifically. You know. Yeah. Um. But I would. I would be curious why. Uh. People think that. Um. And I, again, I'm, I'm, uh, Cosmo Jarvis was acting. Yeah. But he was saying that earlier in the chat, Zach was saying, but that was Blackthorn, Blackthorn trying to act. He's not good at it. That wasn't Cosmo failing. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, <laughs> have to figure out on that one because I, I was kind of surprised because I enjoyed his acting throughout the show. Um, everyone's acting in this seemed to be pretty. Yeah, I mean, uh, like he he has great. Some, he has some great standout moments. Uh, we've talked before about the the episode where he gets the gardener killed. Yes, um, it's like a pretty standout moment for Blackthorn for me. Um, he always has. You know these. He's uh, he's you know the our eyes into all of this, um, which I thought was uh, he did a really good job of. He's he's very like curious and attentive. Like there's something um that I really really like about the way that Blackthorn like in the journey the journey that he goes on through it. Um, it's possible Cosmo is excellent with a katana in real life, but his character isn't. Oh right, yeah, he's acting. Oh, is that what they were upset about? Like I that's what I'm saying is like yeah I. Of course, you know that that totally makes sense for me. I don't understand why someone would be like he's a bad actor because of that scene. Is that what they were? Is that is that what it was about, Zax? That's such a strange thing for me. Like I don't understand why anyone, um, like how Blackthorn became a bad actor doesn't mean Cosmo. Being a bad actor doesn't mean Cosmo is a bad actor. I guess like acting in front of the leaders, <laughs> like Tornaga. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that's what people. I, I, that specific that. scene. That specific scene is what was like. People were like, "Wow, he sucks." 
I'm I do, that doesn't make any sense to me. I'd have to I'd have hit, I'd have to hear the because, reasoning on that. Yeah, because Blackthorn's not good with a k- katana. Cosmo Jarvis is a bad actor. That seems really silly if that's true. I wouldn't expect. I don't him to be good. I'm with so a katana. yeah. I'm just I'm just yeah. He's he's a a Brit, right? Weapons expert, as far as with a firearm expert, so to yeah. say, naval. Huh. That's so, dude. Zach, that's crazy. That can't be real. <laughs> <laughs> Why would anyone think that? Oh my gosh, man. <laughs> we got to be back on Zach's stream. I know that was a lot of fun. Oh man. No, I Have know, y'all I, made it through episode ten, Zach? Did I y'all just, do that last be, week? That should be tomorrow, right? Um, bro, that's an, that's crazy. I, Zach, your panels are always so funny to me because. Like uh, when when we were on there, there, there's always those times where someone will say something, and I go, "Uh," and I'm like, "Well, let's see. I gotta in- find a way to interject here." <laughs> Just be I, I like, enjoy <clears> Zach's <throat> respectfully. Uh, <laughs> I enjoy Zach's streams because you t- you actually get a diverse range of thoughts. That's true diversity, you know. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's it's cool to see all of that, and everybody's always so cool when you when you're you have those uh those conversations too and you're like well you know <laughs> the uh, caravan scene he was over the top and they blamed the actor man that okay i'm okay. yeah I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be not, i'm gonna be in there tomorrow <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be so, in the troll in the chat room and <laughs> bruh that's so crazy. You're just gonna see Dude, we capitalize. Just, no, yeah, we should just we should just both get in there tomorrow and be like, Cosmo Jarvis is the best actor on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Top ten Justice reasons for like Cosmo. Cosmo. <laughs> Team Cosmo. <laughs> yeah, bro, that's so funny. Oh uh, man. Okay, so I, I enjoyed episode nine, by the way, uh, when it ended how it was father leto uh praying i thought it was very ominous um at the very end over the credits after mariko died his prayer over the credits i thought that was very ominous mm. um man she's such a good character in this show she really is but so the good. the main question i had with episode 9 is where is rodriguez he just kind of fell off oh that dude did just disappear i was yeah well i guess that's just the story the only reason i'm i would be disappointed in it because i thought he was going to play a little bit more of a role um yeah i i I think i i think with them if they were going to do one season and that's it maybe they should have done a few more episodes like two to four more episodes i mean budget wise you're kind of constrained it did it seemed like in parts, more so towards the end, things were starting to get really rushed. Um, yeah, the last episode did feel a little rushed to me. Um, I, I again, I haven't read the book, and so I don't know what was left out, what was changed. Um, and but I don't kinda know. Like Fuji kind of dropped off too, and we get that, you know, that very impactful scene in episode ten. But yeah. there are quite a few episodes well, where she was just. And but that's the thing is like I, I I guess the way you have to kind of look at it with some characters is it's like well there's really no reason for them to be here you know what I mean yes like yeah. so you kind of have to look at it like okay that's a good point yeah like do you know it's like do, there are scene there's uh like Toranaga's not in a few episodes like I actually don't think he's in Crimson Sky at all right am I wrong uh, about that no, oh no I think uh, right. if anything may, just briefly if he is it's like so brief um. I'm trying. If he is, he's at in this beginning part somewhere. But no, I don't think he is. I don't Maybe think he's not. in. The, I don't think he's in this episode because that was something I thought was really interesting that stood out to me. Um, is that he isn't in episode nine? Um, at least not physically, right? But I, I again, I the his presence is felt through everything because yeah. he's just he's putting those pieces into places and he clearly understands like we were talking about on Zach's panel and like we've talked about the entire season he knows exactly what he needs to do um and you know honestly I, I we'll get into it with episode 10 and we can kind of move in that direction um well I wanted to say one last thing about episode 9 yeah for sure I think one last thing which is we find out in episode 9 that Torinaga has other sons and oh yeah I thought that was a bit odd 
Um, and I almost want to venture potentially lazy writing. And I say that because it's like that's a pretty big factor in this show. Are you sure it's uh, the first uh, time they've talked about it? I'm almost <laughs> certain it is. Okay. I'm almost I certain it I is. I can't say for certain because that was something I was like, the biggest thing with that, I wouldn't really call it necessarily call it lazy. Um, but it's something that they probably should have had a line in an, in an earlier episode. Well, it's uh, it's kind of like that. why has it? The well, show? No, no, hold on. Well, point. hang on. No, 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 no. Why there's, haven't they addressed? There's no them. way. There's no way that. Dude, I'm telling you, they have not mentioned anything because about... his his wife was in Osaka with his newborn, and that is a point in earlier episodes for sure. Okay, she's I, been I, there. I have to go back through. She's been there the entire, unless they just like didn't mention that that was his son. Um, there's an there's an episode at some point, and I think it's earlier than episode nine, where they mention that his wife and his newborn are in Osaka, and he would like them back because he hasn't. Unless that was. Miriko, who mentions that in episode nine, that he hasn't been able to hold his new son. Yeah, I think it was Miriko who okay. mentioned that in episode we will, nine. Because then my other let's... point was why aren't why aren't they at the why weren't they at the funeral as well? And and it, like his other sons, cause it's, it's oh, because it's it's more they're... than just that baby. Right, but they it it depending on where they may not be there. Yeah, it just seems like a major de- detail to write off. To to just leave I mean it seems I don't you know, know what I mean? Maybe I don't know if I would call it major, because uh, they don't make a big they don't make like a big deal of like when his son dies. Oh, that's the last in his line. You know what I mean? Like I, it, is it a detail that was left out? Like maybe, but I don't know if it's like a major detail. Does that make <laughs> common sense? Common people, yeah, yeah, yeah. Common people in the troll room. That's that's too funny. Common people said, uh, "I like the show. Am I wrong?" Uh, I can't see because the heart symbols. Uh, he or said, should I pay to persuade you? No, no, <laughs> common people. Wow. Uh, and every time you comment, it has to be at least ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> just it's kidding. good. It's good to see you. Um, hey, no, I should. I should say you got to put your dollar um, donation in there towards the one thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> what was that for? So the, you? Oh, was it because I, was, I told him how to asked, use the? Yeah. What was it? How to use the um like OBS or whatever to to have like the video on screen. Yes. Okay. Yes, and I made a joke Why do I before have you were telling him I was like in order here. Yo. In, in order to get that answer you have to donate a thousand dollars. Oh man. Uh but, I um yeah man I I don't know. I bet it's there. I I I really w- now I really wish I had gone back and watched the whole thing before we started this but I had a lot going on. Um so as far as that's concerned like if if true that he never ne- they've never mentioned his sons his other sons until episode nine, it is weird. I don't think I would call it a major problem with the show because it's not it's not mentioned in a way that he only ever had one son. That's just the son that is involved in that. Um, and I would I would wager that somewhere in that first or second episode, uh, there's at least some explanation of that. The thing that is kind of strange is that I'm not sure they ever mentioned that Miriko had a son. Or at least that no, was a they detail. Did. That was a detail that I missed because he kind of if that was mentioned, it's mentioned early on enough where he shows up and cuz I had thought about it. I was like, okay, well the two of them have been married and then in episode 9 she's pregnant at the beginning, so I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, well where is and then he shows up in that episode and I was like, okay. Uh, uh, and but again, that's the thing is like if if that was mentioned earlier, like I just mentioned, I missed it, and like it's not, it's not a detail that necessarily matters up until now. Though I'll say this: not having him, like her son, in earlier episodes, like it does feel a little weird that he comes in in episode nine and he has this like moment with her, and that's like pretty much it. Well, they did mention um, you get to see his son. At the, was <laughs> Thank it, you, Common you People, for the see, one you euro. Get, <laughs> you get to see her son, excuse me, in episode two, I want to say. It's either two or maybe even episode one, but I think it's two. Oh, a pound, uh, it's, sorry. It's early on. 
it's early on where you get to see uh, her son. I think you just missed because one of the main things I thought was how weird it was in this episode, how fast he had grown. It just seemed like he went from being four to being 12. Uh, and, and maybe oh, that was just me. Huh. Yeah. So I think you probably, you just missed it. Um, you know, I, I'm not always right, been, but I'm never wrong. It has so been a few, I have it. a few weeks, you know, since those earlier episodes. Yeah, it um, has been. But I will say, too, I really enjoyed the scene with Mariko about to commit seppuku and John offering to be her second. I thought that was um, just something that was... His decision to be her second was both heart wrenching and touching because it exemplified his deep care for her. Yes, you know that absolutely. he wouldn't agree to end her life if he didn't really care for her because he recognized her desire to die, die with dignity, and he volunteered for a task he would have never considered otherwise yeah. without this kind of a character development for him. Did you um, you know, remember when we were talking about that line in the sand? Yes. Did you ever get cuz he was it's mentioned cuz I'm getting confused between the show now and our conversation that night <laughs> a little yeah. bit um was it he he was praying was that essentially what it was I believe so yep. was that the um the sort of like answer um uh, yeah I still think I I'm I'm still on board with sort of the underlying message of it kind of being that he uh he's trying to go a different way than the rest of them like it's still like a, a big part of his his character is that like he doesn't want to fall in line you know yep and then i also think that one of the things that works with this is that he decides to be your second and it is sort of a moment of him being like okay like i have to like for her sake um you know it's like it's one of those moments where like i have to put aside my personal beliefs uh, to essentially be there for her and do something for yeah. her, uh, whether he agrees with it or not, which sort of is a big part of his whole arc throughout all of this. Um, yep. And that whole idea. Yeah, these are so good. That was this looks really good. Impactful and important in the previous episode. You know, loyalty. Um, that yeah. that theme still comes back in, in this episode as well, and that's what. You know, that devotion and loyalty is what John shows to Mariko, mm -hmm. even though he doesn't agree. Um, and it was just, I was just like, oh, dang. And then they played <laughs> it so well with. Um, Good tension. With Tornaga's yeah. best friend, uh, Hadamats, uh, Hadamatsu, yep. however you pronounce his name, his best friend, uh, committing seppuku in the previous episode. And so I was like, oh, she's really going to, you know, she's probably uh, not going to get it. But yeah, they, yeah. They make got you... closer and closer and closer. And I'm like, oh, well, she may actually go through with it. Yeah. And then Ashido steps in at the last second. And and then you're like, okay, she's safe. Yeah. And then freaking at the end of the episode, know, they pull the I rug out it. from underneath you. Yeah. The assassins. I know <laughs> they get we're your not, guards down. I know we're not supposed to call them ninjas, but I feel like calling them ninjas anyway, just because. <laughs> I was like, actually, that's what they're supposed to be. Well, they're like technically, the ninjas weren't really a thing. Like one of the guys on that panel was talking yeah. about it, but they're like farmers. They use a lot of farmer tools, and you know they didn't. A lot of that stuff has been like fantasized um, over time. Uh, either way, like who cares, man? We we get it. Assassins, ninjas, yeah. whatever. Um, but this show is really well shot. I know I was kind of harping on that one uh, shot from earlier a little bit, just from a – it's a taste thing to some degree with some of that stuff. Um, but it, the show is really, really well shot. It's well lit. Um, I thought it was interesting how in that episode, Mariko faced death three times. The first time when she tried to leave Osaka – the second time when she tried to self delete herself, yep. and then the last time when she actually really died. Yeah, it's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it's like well, what's funny, and I say I don't mean like funny, haha. -ha, what's interesting about it, I guess, is that uh, the last one wasn't really her. It was kind of her choice. Like I guess that was maybe that's kind of what they were getting at. Is like both those original, those first two moments. It's like she's making the decision to leave. And so, like, her her life is in her hands at that moment, right? Because the whole, I think, like, part of her character uh, is that 
she kind of wants to go out on her own terms, regardless of what that is. And, and so honor to her family's name. Yeah, yeah. And so that first time, she's tr- she's essentially, I mean, she's trying to get them to kill her uh, yes. in that scene earlier on. And then in this one, she's given a, a path out because this is, in their culture, an honorable way to go. Um, and then the last one, you know, it's like, I get, I don't know, because she was going to get captured. Like, that was what they were trying to do. Um, and I think she knows from two perspectives, you know, uh, she's more, in a lot of ways, like, in that moment, she's more valuable if she's killed. And she's already been in this position where she she's wanted that for a long time. And so she kind of gets her moment uh, in that. Though, I, I'll say this, like, I wish at, at least it hadn't, felt really um because we can we can get to that point um real quick before we move on to the next one yeah um, go ahead i i kind of wish that she had done it in a bit more of like uh i'll stand oh like i sh- i have to push this thing or whatever please get these women out of here do this for me and so she's like and then she like dies in in the attempt instead of just like putting herself up against the thing yeah, um, I'm not. But that was still her fulfilling her duty to Tornaga because to she Tornaga, knew for sure. She knew that they were gonna um, fire the cannon, and so it was kind of her putting her life in her hands in a sense um, to be able to fulfill his request and for Japan to really um, be at peace for a longer time with Tornaga becoming the Shogun. Yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah. And we get to see Yabushige's real character come out in you, this episode, too. Y- yeah, he, I think he realizes that, like, his trickery and everything's gone too far, for sure. Um, and I, you, I, you even get to, you get to see that breakdown in the next one for him, where he is, yes. he has no, um, he's got nothing left. He's got no more cards to play, like, it's pretty much over for him. Um, and, yeah, he's lost his mind. Mm-hmm. And what's so funny is, like, I feel like, up until his conversation with Toranaga in the next episode, he just keeps trying to find ways out, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it's so interesting. It really is, especially, it's kind of funny with as much as he, fat in the early episodes, we got that he fascinated on death and how people died and, um, you know, killed one of John's men and, and boiled was, him alive. Yeah. And taking solace in it, like seeing how he confronted death and then. Throughout the entire season, we just see Yubashige, um try not trying to confront death, and with the exception of that one episode with him on the bottom of the, uh, in the ocean, yeah, um, and being rescued by John. Outside of that, every single other attempt that will lead to his death, he's trying to avoid, in a sense, being cowardly. Um, and when now we see the full culmination of that in episode nine, that. Uh, you know, that he appears to be very cowardly, but then in episode 10, uh, would you say with him, I mean, again, I don't think, I have my own thoughts on the um, self-deletion uh, that the Japanese culture did at that time, but with their idea of it being honorable and going off of the show's um, theme, would you say that that, de- like, that death kind of solidifies him as being, like, still having somewhat honor, like his honor intact? Uh, maybe. I don't. So I would say his character, you know, uh, basically develops into uh, this full blown coward, to where he's just trying to cheat yeah. death and get out of it, and regard, you know, and, and be tricker and and play yeah, tricks. And I think it, it be sly and manipulate. Yeah, he's always he was always looking for his like best moment oh not his best moment that's not what i'm saying but he's always you know he was trying to play the game all the time yeah he he thought he was smarter than pretty much everybody else uh and ultimately he was still basically just used by toranaga the same way everybody else was um he played his role he had his purpose um he who knows like like Tor- toranaga everyone already knew he was kind of a uh a uh a snake in the grass. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, and uh, I think that that plays like a uh, 
that a three big role heart. in it. Yeah, uh, and maybe he doesn't. There's a lot of stuff that you could have a conversation like the threefold heart thing. Each character, I imagine each character in the show, um, or maybe even if you, maybe not so much with um, the foreign characters, but each Japanese character in the show, you could probably talk about their threefold heart and how that worked. And like Yabashige, uh, in particular, um, maybe his like true heart on the inside was that cowardice that finally came out. Yeah. Um, you could easily sit down and have a very long talk about each character in the show and, and have bits of stuff from the show that, that back up the points of like, well, you know, do we ever really see Toronaga fully? You know what I mean? Does he ever actually yep. show us um, who he really is? Who he really is. Yeah. Um, which well, I'm not I'm not sure we ever really get to see fully. I think you get I think the closest you get is I think it's the end of episode eight um, where he you know, he's at the. Um, uh, sorry, where he's at his son's funeral and he's, you know, talking about his best friend and his son or whatever. And he's like, thank you for your sacrifices, essentially. It's like I, it's probably the closest you get to seeing a bit of like who he is um, away from everybody else when he doesn't have to be hidden. But even in those moments, like I had said before, like he's still trying to hold on to that. Like he's yeah. he's still not fully like breaking down. He's still not trying to um, reveal his secrets. Reveal himself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we need to get into our thoughts on episode 10. Do you want to start and give your. Yeah. You know, I mean, ultimately, and I, again, this is a reason I want to go back and, and watch the show again. Um, I'm mostly fine with the way that it ended. I think the biggest thing that I would have changed, just jumping ahead a little bit, um, is maybe just a moment of showing Toronaga as Shogun. Just a quick, like, nothing crazy, right? We don't need to spend a lot of time in that era for him. Um, and I, uh, I, I feel like there's probably some good arguments for why the show ended where it did. Um, I just think that, and I don't need a lot of a, like wish fulfillment. I don't. I think that it's fine that there wasn't like some massive battle at the end of the the season. I mean, that was literally the whole point, right? Is that he wasn't trying to shed, like there wasn't supposed to be any bloodshed. Um, I I think that uh, ten just felt a little weird because it was just sort of wrapping up loose ends, um, and not all of it hit as well as I think stuff earlier in the season did. Um, Agreed. I think the Yabushige stuff is really strong. Um, I love, I love the moment with uh, Toronaga's spy. Yes. It's very good. Like the show still, I mean, the episode is and still... And the Fuji scene with John in yes. episode 10? Yes, it's very good too. Uh, yes, it's, there is There's still, a lot of callbacks in episode 10 that yeah. I thought were really great from previous episodes. Yeah, it's still, I still think it's a, it's a very strong episode. I just think that when it comes down to it, the ending is just going to be controversial for people. Whether yeah, I, whether that was the moment. With you some. What do you mean? You basically said that uh, you don't think there was a need for a big battle in episode 10, and I actually disagree. I think um, <laughs> it would have been nice. It, it, it seemed like the show played out too perfectly with Toronaga's plans, and it would have been nice to see you know, maybe that one blow up in his face to where, like, okay, well, maybe it's not the, like, complete and total bloodshed throughout Japan, but there's, like, one battle that you get to see that's unfortunate and, you know, that he can't avoid. Um, and you get to see that play out again. We don't need a, a whole episode long battle. That's not what I'm talking about. Right. Um, you I, know, because it, it seemed like we were building up to this big confrontation and battle. And it does make sense with Tornaga's character to, Hey, as little bloodshed as possible, but it, it would have been nice to see like not all his plans come to fruition. And like, there's some things that he just can't control that. Um, so the thing about that is that I don't think he was fully in control. Like we talked about this on, on Zach's show. I don't know if we got, if we actually talked about it on ours. Um, 
Yeah, uh, sorry, Cud. YouTube does that to everybody. For whatever reason, they just, like, refuse to uh, let people know when we go live. Um, for those of you in there, it just it happens all the time. Like, I think even if you put the notification on there for everything that we drop, um, sometimes YouTube is still, like, their system is so broken in some ways. Like, they just don't, especially with, like, live streaming, they don't, they don't treat that stuff very well. Yeah. Um, but the we're, glad you're, to keep we're up. glad you're here. <laughs> yes, we are. And the best way to keep up with us is Discord, because either me or Dave would post in there when, you know, we're going live or when we have to reschedule for the next day or the following week. We would like, theoretically, to get back to posting that information on YouTube as well and elsewhere. But with me now working, like, 12-hour days and David working long hours, too, it's just uh it's been difficult so uh but we're glad you're here um and you know youtube as david said that's been messing up with everybody so uh, if you want to keep up the date that's going to be the the best way to do it yes um uh okay so you think there should have been a big battle i really just don't see I, a need i just don't again, see a need for it i don't I say a, a battle i i think there is a need because you're having this build up throughout the entire season and you know, it's building to this crescendo, and it seemed like a letdown that we didn't get that, especially for the characters as well. And like, it would have been nice to, again, to see Toronaga have to face something that he doesn't want. I don't want okay. this bloodshed. Yeah. You know, yeah, there's yeah. that conflict, that internal conflict with the character. Okay. So, uh, what or, if, how about this? Let me, let me spit, I'll, let me partially agree with you, but go in a slightly different direction. You know how, um, he was talking about uh, John needing to, like, re uh, wait, no. Yeah, John Blackthorne, right? How Blackthorne needed to, um, like, fix the ships and do all that. Maybe yes. maybe for to, to scratch that itch a little bit, because um, the question of, like, budgetary concerns definitely comes into play. Because um, like, if you go back and watch early seasons of Game of Thrones, like, there's very little... They, like, skip major battles early on. Right. The, the show is leaning hard into acting and that changes as like a bunch of the major actors in the show die and the show got more popular it just became like a big special effects like you know it's what we got in yeah. later seasons of game of thrones some of which right. was cool some of which was very bad um but i think the way that and maybe this would have been a little bit more satisfying is instead of showing like that that major battle maybe they could have shown us like these bits of Blackthorn being involved in um, using the ships to take back over certain things for him or, you know, ki uh, like kicking out the Portuguese if that was the case. Like, I I'm pretty sure that um, Toronaga, um, someone was saying that like he removes all of the, the Catholics from, uh, the capital or something like that at one point from yeah, Edo from Edo um or Osaka I should say was it Osaka I can't quite remember I can't um, remember what was the capital I think uh, it's if for Edo time. for him because I think Edo eventually becomes Tokyo it does um, uh, yeah but and I, I want to say it seemed like it seemed like they were making Osaka to be the capital during that time but maybe uh, I'm wrong yeah I think that the show potentially 11 episodes is weird 12 is probably a, a solid number still if there was a way for them to like fit in just a little bit more, because I it, there is a piece of me that's like this is anticlimactic, and again I want to go back and watch the whole thing together again to kind of see if I change my mind about that at all. Um, and I understand like that that need. I think sometimes I wonder though if like the it's sort of the um, the the personal need over like, versus what the show really needs, you know? Like, oh, man, it would have been great to have this big battle. It's like, oh, it's this, like, satis this really satisfying thing um, in a lot of what we're getting and, and what they were going for. Whether it works for you or not was that they wanted to go for the more, like, this is all about his, his like, personal strategy. It's all about him, uh, tr like I was saying, like, trying to avoid as much bloodshed as possible. It's like, you remember when, um, when his son, like, kills all those uh those guys in like episode five or six with the cannons like he tricks them and he he blows everybody up like Toronog is really upset with him yes and that is again that that's those moments where it's like Toronog is not in control of everything 
He's just not. Like, there are certain things that, that throughout the show are out of his control, and it was, there are, are moments where I I wonder if he knows he's really defeated, or at least in the moment, he's like, well, I can't win this way anymore. Like, I need to see how certain things play out. Um, and so he has to, like, switch things on the fly. Um, and it's those subtle things of, like, you know, he knows he can't, maybe, like, this idea of, quote-unquote, Crimson Sky, right? And he's telling them all, it's like, oh, we're, we're going to, like, charge straight in. And he knows, like, that's probably not going to work. And he knows that he needs to have some sort of way at, to manipulate the people within the castle uh, uh, in order to, uh, like, change things in his favor and, like, and win people over. Um, right. And so I, I think the show, again, is, like, it's trying to, to be more on that um that this isn't going to be this isn't like the last samurai right like it's not going to end with the big final stand <laughs> for yeah. for the samurai with like you know um even though there are like similarities between the two um and i understand like the need i i think yeah there there probably was some good potential for blackthorn on a ship and doing like blackthorn things and um man i mm, I, Being able to see the cannons in action because it seemed like we never got. I mean, we got to see the murder Josen Ishido's um, general, yeah. But we didn't get to see them in battle, and that was the whole point. I, or one of the supposedly one of the points for yeah um, John was to you know show them how effective they are and how we can take Osaka with them. And so I I, I don't know. I just I thought a battle was missing. It didn't again. It doesn't have to be this humongous one episode battle half the episode or anything like that but some sort of a battle to see um Toronaga confront something he didn't want to confront but at the same time you know i i agree with your point and also agree with what zach said in the troll room that you know it's the biggest battle on mainland japan ever it's expensive but even showing us overall strategy and how all these factions came together would work and and everything like that. I don't know. It just seemed like not only do you get this conflict of being able to see Tornaga do something that, you know, he doesn't want to do, but then you could also see his mind at work and how the show portrays him as a military strategist and how he right. would try to how try to have the battle go as effectively and efficiently as possible. Yeah. I could see that. Um hmm. Yeah, and again, man, I, I do wonder if it just comes down to budget. Ultimately. Yeah, I, and probably does. I, and, and and again, I was just with episode ten. I was just let down, and I was disappointed in it. Again, I don't. I didn't hate the episode. Uh, there was a lot of things in the episode I love. I love a lot of the callbacks. Probably my my probably the favorite aspect of the show to me was uh, Fuji's and John's interaction. Mm, and it is really good. Her te- her telling him the you know let I can't remember her words exactly but let me hold your hands and and you let go when you're ready or, or whatnot calling back to when she um lost her husband and her child and what was it episode one or two and she's told the same thing um it was just a really tender and and, and beautiful moment uh encapsulating their relationship um along with them sitting in the house too and they're just by themselves and Mariko isn't there, and he's just like no translator, and they just sit in that sadness. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is good. It's it's crazy, right? Like the whole him. Yeah, that that's one of the things that's that gets pointed out. Uh, I was looking for that Mariko scene. Did I skip it already? Oh no, here it is. Um, that was one of the things that's so crazy about their whole interaction in uh, in this episode is that. Uh, you know, now that Mariko's gone, um, he ha- he's going to have a harder time for a while uh, translating. Yep. Other than the fact that, you know, of course, Toronaga. And again, I, I think there's so much, I as you know, whether, no matter where you come out on this episode, it's why it's hard for, like, if someone was like, oh, no, this episode's just trash, it would be really hard for me to, to, to agree with that because the show wraps up a lot of... Uh, these relationships really well and everybody has uh like I, I think most of the important characters get the send-offs that they need i think the thing the show was missing is it, some of the, the the smaller characters which again 10 episodes right like we're, there, there's only so much you're going to be able to do in 10 episodes um yep. it's still pretty tight 
considering and um you know we we could have gotten a lot worse and we oh have, dude overall we gotten, it's a fan. we have gotten a lot worse and it's dude, why it's like, a fantastic show and especially with having hardly any action and it's just people in a room talking yeah there's intense drama well the thing that there's I, go ahead the thing that i like about not having a lot of action in a show is it makes the moments of violence a lot more like po- poignant you know like yeah. you, it, it's like oh God, like when when uh those cannons go off and like blow up all those guys you're like holy mo like whoa 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 like because it's so different than a lot of the other stuff that you're getting throughout the episode uh, or not just that episode, but the whole whole series where it's like th- there is violence in it, but it is used sparingly. Um, and so much of it, too, is uh, borderline like uh, what's the word I want to use? Because um, it's like it's brutal, but everything's so clean at the same time. Yes. So Sapuku is not like a clean way to die by any means, but it it. Ever because of the way that the the show is shot and and the way that the society is portrayed, every everything still is sort of so like in its place and has its purpose and and it just feels like normal. So that when you do have a moment where something gets really bloody or something seems out of place, like it hits a lot harder um, yep. than the moment uh, the moments like this or just moments of like characters talking to each other about strategy or um, you know. Blackthorn learning about uh, the culture that he's now in, like that he's now completely engrossed in, um, and I, I think a lot of that really does work really well. And you're right; I think the scene's really great. Um, and jumping pretty far ahead through this episode, um, and uh, you know, Miriko saves jo- uh, Blackthorn's life one more time because um, yes. she she basically sacrifices a ship in order for him to be able to live. Um, Yabashige, like like you were talking about, it's this whole interaction with him and John on the boat, like they're like he's done, like it's so crazy, like uh, again, it's crazy to me that people don't think that Cosmo Jarvis is like doing a good job of acting in this show. <laughs> it's even yeah. crazier if Zach's if, with what Zach's is saying about it being about that scene where he holds the katana like a rapier. It's like y- yeah, he doesn't know what he's doing. That makes total sense. I don't, whatever. Um. Uh, maybe um, if if I can stay awake tomorrow, I need to hop in, like hop on their chat and just be like, guys, what is up with that? Like, why do you think that? Same. Who thinks that? Explain this. Um, but it, you know everything. You know it goes in the direction that uh, makes sense for these characters. Like y- Yabashige, as much as I hate uh, that, you know I can't get my spin off with him and Blackthorn. <laughs> I think yes. it. Uh, Oh man, that show would have been great. Just them going on adventures together. <laughs> oh yeah, I that's what I need. I just need them to do an alternate timeline where that doesn't happen. And he Shogun, and, what if season? Yeah, uh, yeah. Season. Give me, yeah, give me some, give me a what if if uh, Yabashige and uh, Blackthorn um, actually got to go on adventures together because I think that would have been great. And I love that the guy that the actor that plays Yabashige is so good in this. Oh, so good, dude. Um, he was also in uh, Thor. I didn't know that. Oh, was he? Yeah, he was. Huh. Who knew? Um, oh, and it, it hit, you know, you were talking before about how, it, and I had forgotten about this till we went over there, but um, Yabushige asking for, like, a different death. Yeah. Like, do anything. Like, he's so interesting, right? It's like, you could read a lot into that moment of him being like, please, like, let me get eaten alive by fish or, like, let all, any of these other horrific things happen to me. Like, don't let me go out like that. Um, and you, I guess, dude, it's like that's probably what we were, what you were kind of talking about is, like, his cowardice is really showing, you know? Um, but thought it was so, interesting, too, is how he interesting. asked John to be his second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, really just great series man i can't say enough good things about it i mean just really well done to craft a uh, drama and just uh the character writing and narrative writing to make it so intriguing and interesting without with minimal action uh in a series like this is just you got the political intrigue well it's just well crafted yep uh and of course you have the moment where his his spy 
reveals that he's been able to speak English the whole time. Um, which I thought was like a great little moment. I mean, it's like, I, dude, I, I think my the thing that makes me the most sad is that like, <laughs> there's no more of these interactions. Like we don't get to watch yep. this tomorrow. Um, and get to talk about the characters and the the things that are happening because it's it's done. Agreed. Um, and I hope I I hope that they learn the right lessons from this and that because this is kind of I this is would be my sort of, again pushing back just a little bit on the whole like we needed a big battle thing. Uh-oh, uh oh, YouTube is receiving enough video to main smooth streaming as much. Mm, I think we're okay. We still look okay. okay. Um, I I think that I wouldn't have hated a little more action in the show, uh, but I think from a Hollywood tends to learn the wrong lessons from things. Um, I hope this is a case where they learn the correct lessons that when you have a well written script, when you have good acting, good direction, like when everything is coming together properly, you you can make something that people are really gonna love. Um, yep. because I think that was one of the things that happened with Game of Thrones is I, I think people did start to ask for like bigger battles and they, you know, when they did, um, uh, the big Winterfell fight in the last season and they were like, oh, it's going to be like Helm's Deep. And then it was a big brown, stupid battle oh. that made no sense, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, that is the worry that I have when, cause you'll get that right. But then like that's what you get right and i man i'm just i'm happy that we got something that decided to go more tame yes a more um measured route is the way that i would say it like they they held back in places yeah. um and to be honest they I'm, showed I'm restraint a, restraint yes i'm i'm happy that they they decided to go that route um even if i i do agree that i i would have liked to see maybe a little bit more of like what Blackthorn was capable of, um, you know, maybe even even if it's not the last battle, like some of Toronaga's strategy in battle, um, or just like having those, you know, some more of those victories. But um, overall, man, yeah, I'm super super happy with the show. It's a solid nine for me. Great, I think. Um, if yeah, I'm, I would say I'm solid gonna, nine as well. If I'm going to be forced to put a number on it, um, and yeah. of course that's a bit of a sliding scale. I can always be um, argued one way or the other. But if anything, I'd be argued up from there more so than down i think agreed uh, so yeah uh i was trying to think if there's anything else with this episode um i don't have anything else i think that's the stuff with Tornaga and uh blackthorn was great where he was he's he you know he's basically at this point he's willing to sacrifice himself for the village like he they, it's a great like you were saying talking about callbacks but it's a great payoff from that episode with his gardener gardener yeah where he now understands he and the life and death and the importance of both of these things like he's learned so much and this is this and um his interactions um forgive me i forgot her name as well when they're on the boat what we were talking about earlier um his entire story fuji. Kind of, fuji thank you um these two moments he really begins to sort of like understand that cycle and he understands his culture more um i love them again it's that those that, those little like pinches of humor to some degree um and maybe it's just me chuckling a little bit at it, but like Toronaga being like, "Yeah, he's never leaving Japan." <laughs> yeah, um, it's pretty great stuff, man. Um, Completely agree. And again, Yabashige, you know, he goes out like, you know, uh, yeah, agreed. He um, he very much has that those cowardly moments, but like he does kind of take his uh, his fate in strides when it finally comes to it, uh, and being able to have that moment with Toronaga, and they have like that. Uh, they talk um, and then he uh, he gives him a bit of insight into what's going on and then when he asks about the future he's like why would I tell the future to a dead man it's pretty good yes. it's pretty good that was another callback from an earlier episode too um, to Yabushige saying that to um, who was it was it to John I think it was to John uh, uh, so Oh yeah, I, I should have again. If if I would have had time to, I would have wrote down you know all these episodes, done my research and everything. But it's just been crazy or week. Oh for sure. And yeah, man, that's that's pretty much it. Um, John, you know, pull, he pulls the ship out. 
uh, and Toronaga is, you know, still planning, still thinking about the future. Um, and I, again, it's like interesting that this is kind of the moment that they, again, oh man, I know it's just this shot of him looking at the mountains, but the this, this show really, <laughs> it's cinematography and this is still really good. Oh my gosh. Because there's so, like, this is the thing about it, right? Is it's just, it's not just about the image on the screen. It's like what you can pull from it. Yes. Um, and it's why when we were talking the other day uh, on Zach's stream and I was trying to explain to a few people on that panel, I was like, there are things that you are supposed to read into with shots. When they yes. hold on something for a certain amount of time, when they when they don't, when a character has a certain look on their face that the camera definitely wants you to notice, um, the subtle things sometimes in the background that you may not notice, like every... When a show is done properly, when when it's thought about, um, and uh, they uh, things matter, right? That it's right. that's why I was saying like, he, yeah, he may just be putting a line in the sand. It may ultimately be like, oh, he was just praying in that moment, and he was trying to do his own thing. But like, the people making the show want you to dig deeper into it. A lot of the time, they want you to look at it and go, okay, yeah, I get that. But there's got to be more to it than that. Like, a, like really well-crafted shows, movies, the whole deal. Like they, There are those things that they want you to look for. And then not only do they want you to look for those things, but like if it's done properly, you'll find your answers either later on or earlier on in the show. Agreed. Like, it all, it all connects. Um, and I... Uh, yeah. Just so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, are you are you good? You're good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for for tuning in to listen to our final. Well, I say final discussion on Shogun. I imagine we'll have little discussions here and there um, over the the coming episodes while we talk about other stuff, and especially when we talk about other terrible shows that are coming out this year. Yes. Um, Acoly- Acolytes in a month. Is that right? Yeah, it is. And we got uh, House of the Dragon Season 2 in a month Ooh, as well. We're only yes. going to see... Ep- we're only going to be reviewing Episode 1 and 2 of Acolyte. Of Acolyte. And, and, and we can keep up with it as Shogun goes on, but I don't really care to. But, well, I think you yeah, we don't have to do it. full breakdowns of, of yeah. Acolyte, dude. I'm so, I mean, at this point, we can talk about it. We can talk about stupid moments. If like there's some really funny stuff from it, maybe I'll, I'll clip some stuff. And we can, we, you know, we can play it or whatever. But I want to do that more. Like, I want to I wanna try to do some more clippable type stuff um, in the future. Kind of get back to some, at least some of that. Yes. Um, it's tough Same. on YouTube because of copyright. So figuring out how to do it properly is a problem sometimes. Um, I think it's a little bit less with Disney. Um as long as there's not uh, copyright music in it, like if you're just showing clips, uh, I think that stuff is typically all right. But um, yeah, yeah, common common uh, people's like enjoy this while you can. Yeah, there's not there are yes. two two more television shows this year that I think will uh, sit in similar places to Shogun, uh, House of the Dragon season two and Arcane season two. Yep. Um, but who knows, man. You know, hopefully we, have, we have some more surprises. Yeah, we have a lot of time left this year. Um, I think I I was gonna go see Boy Kills World this past Sunday, but I was so tired from last week at work. I was like, "There's no way I'm getting out of the house to to go do that." I like I just, that, dude. it's it's so crazy too because you're just sitting in a movie theater, but it's like a lot of effort to like go and you know do the whole deal. Um, I still yeah. am planning to see that. That may be something that I I just kind of bring up uh, next week because um, I'm I'm curious about that one. I'm still on the hunt for some some smaller like action films um ungentlemanly warfare funny enough was uh pretty uh split some people really liked it some people didn't um I but i still that. i still think it was i i think i stand by pretty much everything i said i don't think i would change my i haven't changed my thoughts on it at least since last week um i, I still hey man it's only made 16 million worldwide it's only made on, has close it even to released five hundred eighty thousand internationally? Oh, so it did finally release internationally. Yeah, mm, it that's did. unfortunate. Um, oh, listen, that's fine. Y'all can keep getting your dumb gorilla movies. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, yeah, I still think it's it's something that um, that that's the kind of direction that we really should be getting with our lower budget movies. I I don't know, man. Like I wonder, and it's something again. We're we're almost done, but like I I do wonder if maybe budgets are just overblown at this point. They are, and so it's impossible for some like Unge- ungentlemanly warfare. Like it it doesn't seem like it should be an expensive movie. Like I don't think there's a ton of CG in it. Um, you know, your cast other than Henry Cavill. Like I I can't imagine you're needing a huge budget for them. Um. So it, it Hollywood and, and the budgets have gotten really bloated, um, and that's it's unfortunate uh, because stuff like this can't survive um, on you know making you know ten million at the box office when that maybe that's like the direction certain things need to be going. Kind of like we've talked about in the past. It's just really it's annoying because um, the money's just not there like it used to be. I think in general though, dude. I think. Uh, it's a lot of um, shortened attention spans, so like people just aren't, they're not going to see stuff unless it's like big spectacle bullcrap. I agree with that. So, I can definitely see that point. Um, anyway, thank you guys for tuning in to episode 170 of The Underground. We'll be, uh, we'll be back next week with something. What are we talking about next week? <laughs> do we have something for next week? We do have something for next week. Let me see. Oh. <laughs> I'm pulling up our schedule right now. You know now. what's so funny is I went in and looked at that schedule last week, and you had put in there that we were going to talk about the Fallout episodes week by week. <laughs> I just was, oh, yeah. I was just laughing about that because I was like, that definitely didn't happen. No. <laughs> That's because you wanted to review it all at one time. If I could, if I would have done it week by week, it would have been better. For yeah, me. but they dropped it all at one time. Like the, it would have been useless. It would have been useless. For it would have been. You're right. Week. You're right. It because is. they, um, no one's, no one's talking about it anymore. Everybody's talking about. Dude, the we games. don't have. To- the fall guy if we can see it if oh i don't know if, if it's out this weekend i can see it okay perfect. but i can't make any promises oh it's um i'll say this from what i heard on uh technically mexican stream i i think you won't have a problem being able to watch it okay i got you yeah appreciate um, it yeah yeah for sure uh all right well thank you all so much for listening to this episode until next time y'all take it easy see ya <laughs>